Okay, so last time we um, talked a little bit about uh, the different kinds of planes, and I just want to review that very briefly. So here we have the uh, face-centered cubic structure. Okay. I've got a whole bunch of unit cells. Remember that this is the unit cell for it, right? the smallest um, unit for the structure. And if I build up with multiple unit cells, I can build up my crystal. What I wanted to just remind you, if I go ahead and show the face planes and these planes here, the one one ones that cut corners, just wanted to remind you that the different kinds of planes that can be sliced through the material have different orientations within the structure. You can clearly see that. And that if I take a look at the planes themselves, that you can see they have different packing, different symmetry. And we've got that square packing here for the face, and we've got that hexagonal packing here for the 111 type planes. This, these again are the billiard ball uh, type packing planes. Okay, so let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so we're back to our PowerPoint presentation. So this is just what I showed you when you take a look at the, the slides. Okay, again, pack density differences and orientations. So what we're gonna look at today is how to uh, explain or describe these planes. Okay, how do I come up with uh, this, calling this a 111 and calling this a 100? And these are referred to as Miller indices. And we'll go ahead and just jump right in. So first, um, we're going to go ahead and look at directions. They're a little easier. So we'd like to define uh, specific directions within a crystal. And then from there, we'll define uh, specific planes in a crystal. So the directions look uh, a lot like just defining vectors that you're used to doing from math, except now everything, again, is relative to the, uh, the unit cell. So here's the steps. So all we gotta do is just follow these steps through uh, one by one and you should be fine. So first thing first, we'll define our coordinate system and in this figure it's already defined for us. So there's our X, Y, and Z directions. Okay. If we go ahead and pick, uh, let's say we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this direction here. Right. What we wanna do is grab the uh, head coordinates for the head, fractional coordinates. So that's one, one, one in this case. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and subtract off the tail, which in this case is at our origin already. So the step isn't doing much. I'm gonna get one, one, one back again. Okay. If I had fractions, I would clear them by multiplying through by the uh, least common denominator and then I would reduce to the smallest integers if, if need be. In this case, I'm already reduced. I have no fractions. And then my final step, which is critical, and you'll lose a lot of points if you don't obey this, is to enclose the numbers in square brackets, okay, without commas. So I'm gonna write that nice and big, no commas, when you're describing the Miller indices, and that's also true for planes. Okay, parentheses and commas are for coordinates, just like you do in math, that's fine. But when you're describing a direction, you do not use commas. So let's go ahead and take a look at what happens if we maybe do get some fractions, um, or we do have negative signs. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look at uh, that C here. Okay, so for C, again, we're gonna take the, the head. So in this case, that's down here. And so we're gonna go two thirds in the X direction. And it's on the X axis, so that's zero in the Y, zero in the Z. I'm going to subtract off the tail, 
which is one third out in the X. It's all the way out in the Y, and all the way out in the Z. And so I'm going to get one third minus one minus one. Okay. My next step was to clear fractions. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this and multiply by three. So I'm going to get one minus three minus three. And then I'm going to close this in square brackets, no commas, and the negative signs go on top of the numbers. Okay, so this is read as a one, three bar, three bar direction. All right? So again, no commas, negative signs over top of the numbers, and make sure that your integers that you have are um, the smallest uh, for that direction. So for example, if if I did this and I ended up with a, a two, six bar, eight direction, then I would reduce that to a one, three bar, four, right? Just dividing them all by two. All right. So that's a one, three bar, three bar direction. Okay, so hopefully that's not too bad. Um, go ahead and, and take a second to do A and um, I would pause the video here, go ahead and do A, then come back and we'll take a look uh, at the answer. Okay, welcome back. Let's go ahead and, and take a look at the answer for A and see how you did. So let's see, Again, I'm gonna go ahead and take my, my head of this, this is gonna be zero, one half, one. I take the tail, which is two thirds, zero, one. And I'm subtracting that. I'm going to get minus two thirds, one half, zero. Um, I'll go ahead and multiply through now by six. And so I'm going to get uh, minus four, three, zero. And then I'm going to enclose that in square brackets, put the negative sign over top, and no commas. So that's a four bar, three, zero direction. All right, so let's go ahead. Hopefully you did that, did that well. Uh, you'll get some practice. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, indices for plane B now. We're going to take a look at planes. These are different steps here that we're going to have to walk through. So for plane B, what I want to do is I want to take and find the fractional intercepts with the A, B, and C axes. And it has to intercept the axes. And it can't intercept the axes uh, at a different part in the unit cell. It has to actually intercept the axes themselves. So I'm going to intercept the A axis here, B axis here, and then we'll deal with the C in, the, in a second. So first, let's go ahead and write down the intercept point. So one half for the A, one third for the B. And so they're writing it up here for you to see. And this plane is parallel to the B direction. All right, so the appropriate thing here when it's parallel is to put the intercept as infinity. Okay. This is an arbitrary. This is the limit um, of the, this is the intercept limit as the plane becomes parallel. So if you want, imagine that plane B is not quite parallel uh, to the Z axis, but is, has a very, very slight tilt, right, towards the Z axis. Okay, so it's tilted just ever so slightly towards the Z axis. Then the intercept with the Z axis is going to be, um, you know, Right, some number that's very, very large. And as this plane tilts less and less or becomes more and more parallel, then that intercept value is gonna keep going up. Right? So in the limit of it reaching parallel, the intercept is actually infinity. So if you don't like that, just take it as the convention. All right, so that's our first step. Uh, step two, take the reciprocals. So this is two, three, reciprocal of infinity is zero. If we had fractions, we would again clear them. 
In the case of planes, we don't reduce the result. Uh, your text says to reduce, and so that's fine if you do, uh, but you don't need to with planes. And then we'll close the set in parentheses. Again, key is no commas. This is especially important for planes because if you put commas in, then you've just given a coordinate. All right, so that's plane B. So what about uh, for plane A? So I'm gonna go ahead again, uh, pause the video if you like, and see what you get here for plane A, and then come back and we'll take a look and at it. All right, welcome back. Let's go ahead and look at A. A, if you tried it, has a little bit of a, of a problem that we've gotta, gotta fix here. Okay, so with A, we're gonna have to find the fractional intercepts. Let's go ahead and do that. So it intersects the x-axis here, the a-axis at one. It intersects the b or y-axis here at one. Now what about the c-axis? I needed to intercept the, the c-axis. It's not good enough that it intersects this point out here, although that's useful information for us. So what I'm gonna to need to do is extend the plane. Right, so this plane is coming up out of the board and reaching this corner. So from the XY bottom plane, I'm basically coming out uh, halfway distant. I'm going up a full unit cell. So that means if I was to go the other way, I'm gonna go down um, all the way to my Z axis. And instead of coming up one, I'm gonna go down one. So this will hit here at minus one. And so there's my plane extending down the z-axis until I intercept here at minus one. So that is my intercept. Uh, reciprocals here, that step is uh, obviously not doing anything. In this case, um, I don't have any uh, fractions to clear. So I'm gonna close in parentheses, no commas, and the negative sign must go over the top. And this is read as a one, one, one bar plane. So this is actually one of those billiard ball packing planes we've been talking about. In this particular case, it's, it's sort of slicing and cutting off this corner if you want. All right, well, good job.